Welcome back. Um, we're going to start uh, covering Python programming. Uh, Python programming is by far one of the uh, most um, useful uh, languages out there, and its use is continuing uh, to increase every day. Um, and one of one of the reasons one of the reasons um, Python is is growing in its uh, use is the fact that it's almost natural of reading the code and writing the code is very close to just natural language. And uh, so it's relatively easy to learn and become produ and, uh, productive very quickly. One, because it's easy to read. And the other thing is that it's got so many modules and functions and the stuff built into it uh, that it's um, it makes it uh, it makes very it makes it very easy to have something productive up and running very quickly. The other nice thing is that the Python is supported across all the environment, including Linux, Windows, iOS, um, and uh, so so you doesn't matter what platform you're using for your work, you can get Python running on it. Um, and uh, and more and more, uh, Python initially was being used for folks who wanted to quickly put something together and prototype something and did not want to spend a lot of time writing using some of the other languages that takes a little longer to write a full program. Python that could quickly prototype, test their ideas and move forward. Uh, and initially Python was a but a little slower than other programming language, and it continues to be slower than programming languages like C or even to some extent Java. But uh, things are improving, and uh, and also the fields such as machine learning, data science, and big data, just a big data analysis, is coming along where we need to try various ideas very quickly, and Python lends itself beautifully to it. So right now we are seeing an increase in its adoption across machine learning, data science, and web online solutions as well. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're gonna we're gonna be using a um, version three point uh, three point seven of Python, and it's relatively easy to download it. It's of course free um, free to um, to those who want to. Uh, uh, install it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that as we on this video, so so we know, so you can see what what the process is. I uh, so the um, the the best place to get that information is on Python.org and download the release. I went to this particular release. I'll go there and show you what's available on a given release. So I'm at least. When, when for this video, so I've been using 3.7. If you go to later version, I think right now they're up to 3.10. If you go to the later version, some of the stuff might be slightly different or a slightly different location. It's okay if you uh, if if you want to use a later version, that's perfectly fine. Um, uh, just be ready to have some differences between what I'm presenting and what you're going to see on your machine. Um, and by the way, if you don't want to use 3.7, just go to a download all releases on python.org downloads. And these are the latest one. We're using 3.7. Um, so so these were, uh, this, there's a 3.8 version, there's a 3.9 version, and there's 3.8. 10 version of it available. So let's let's go ahead and use our 3.73 as because everything is based on that. And they tell you what are some of the major new features they've added to this release. Every release they say that they have certain things they've done for the Windows users, certain things they've done for Mac users. So they specify all of that. And down here, they kind of show you all the different versions that are available for to use. So it's really important for you to make sure you get this one that is for your machine and for the worth size of your machine. Most, if you have a newer machine, let's say last three, four years, you've upgraded your machine, you're probably a 64 bit machine. So, so when, you, when you go ahead and get the installer um, uh, for, uh, for this, 
uh, you most likely should get the 64 bit. So I'm going down here. I need Windows, and my Windows is a 64 bit machine. Um, so, and I'm not, ex so there's a zip file I can pull together. There's an executable installer, and there's a web based, web -based installer available for Windows. And <clears throat> so, so, what I'm going to do, I think what I will go ahead and do is just get the installer, it's the easiest way to do it. So, you just click on it and it download it to whatever you want to do and it's going to take a little bit of time oh it's not that big for me it sounds like it's about 25 oh that's pretty small 25 megabyte took about a few seconds to do it and um and now i can go ahead and run it it says install the 64 bit select the install sure i'm not going to do a custom install i'm going to just install it on my machine um, and go for it um, install launch all user recommended. Um, sure, why not? Let's go ahead and add the path 3.7 to, um, to your path. So regardless of where you are in a computer, when you type that, you find it. I don't know if that is necessary, but we'll go ahead and do that. Um, so what we'll do, we'll just do a default installation. We don't want to customize it, so we'll let it run. I'm sure that's the security from Windows is going to ask you, do you want to install it? Sure, why not? And it's going to go ahead and install that. It's going to take a little bit of time to install it. So I'll pause that until it's finished, and then we're going to continue our, our, uh, um, uh, our uh, discussion. So it took not too long. Actually, it wasn't even worth pausing it. It was just like a minute or so. It finishes and kind of gives uh, some kudos to the people who have been involved in making that happen, such as Mark Hammond. And then, uh, so it says, okay, the setup was successful. There is an online tutorial. If you want to read it, it's probably not, not a bad idea to read those things before you get this. Uh, um, so, okay. Um, so say what's new, that's all good. It looked like I am ready to roll. So I'll go ahead and uh, I'll go ahead and do this and see what happens. Now, what I should be able to do is if I go to my windows uh, and just look for Python, um, I, this, is, this is how it's gonna show up. It's gonna be the Python IDLE. So you usually run this one and when it comes up, it looks like that. So now, now I'm running Python. And it, this is called a command window. It's up and running. And for, for this session, that's, that's about all we need to do. We're not going to get in too much into um, uh, creating, creating a program and all that kind of stuff. We'll get that later on. But for now, just let's, let's, let's write some commands and code for Python. For example, Python, you can say, OK, print um, hello. Yeah, that's kind of a mandatory things. And by the way, notice when I'm typing print, it tells me how am I supposed to use print. And since I'm going to print hello world, um, it's just uh, put it in this command in the semicolon. And what it does, and all it does is the name applies, it's going to print hello world. This is typically what we do when we have our first time running the program. So it prints hello world, that's great. I can do other thing. I can use it just simply like a, almost like a calculator. I can say X is equal to 10 and then Y is equal to five X plus two. And oh, already have a syntax error. So uh, I didn't say multiply. So it's basically saying, what, what in the world are you asking? So y uh, equals to five multiplied by x plus two. Okay, and then it doesn't print it. So if you want to print it, you got to say print um, print um, results. And I can set X and then so the prints does that print result. So, oh, I could. And then you can get kind of nice and ah, oh, it doesn't matter. You can go in there and play with it and do all kinds of stuff as far as formatting your um, things. And, and then you can start doing all kinds of code as uh, you go through it. 
um, you know, we can literally program line by line. When we come back next time, now, uh, take take between now and the next uh, video to go through and uh, install install the Python idle on your machine. So when we come back, we can kind of work on that. A couple of things to say, as you can see uh, in Python, you can assign X to a number, and but you notice, um, and then I can, you can say print. Let's, let's see if that it does it. Print X and it prints it. You, but but you can also have variables be strings. So you can say Python is cool, for example, and but you have to put it in double code or single code or tri or triple code. It accepts all of those things. But if you don't put in that, it's going to complain. Now when I come in and print X, it's going to print what I had in there. So. So this was hopefully you'll you'll uh, you'll get a chance to play with some of these uh, uh, command line and try different things and see how it works. That brings us to the end of this. Just getting started with Python, uh, and we'll go in the future um, uh, videos and uh, lecture videos we'll go through and uh, get more in depth into various aspects of Python. Thanks for watching.